Finally, after three years, Stripe has redesigned their website. And today we're going to break down this new redesign and talk about what they did here, why they did this, and what we can learn from this. It's going to be amazing. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what is up? So I don't know if you're excited as me, but when Stripe redesigned their website, I pay attention because Stripe has been for years now kind of like a, a groundbreaking startup when it comes to designing their marketing website. So I'm really excited about this new redesign. And to give you a little bit of context, so this is the new website. It was just launched like I think like a week ago maybe. And I wanna go through this and break this down. But first, let's step back and kind of see the progress of the redesign. So this is Stripe's old website. And this has been pretty much the same since 2017. The, they changed a little bit the logos and the companies, but this was the website before. And it was already a pretty, like a really well-designed website. I think they were the first kind of startup to break down from the normal template of three columns, features, and that kind of stuff um, to bring down this kind of a diagonal break of, you know, the hero section, bring on SVG animation into icons. They were pretty much the first one, I think, that did this to kind of bring in um, a little bit more livelihood into their website. So overall, they already had a pretty nice website. So this has been their website pretty much for the last three years. Before that, they had this website from 2014 to pretty much 2017. So this is a website, this is a kind of a short page, which is kind of looks like more of the cliche. Um, and it's nice to see how they came from this and by the way this is what they had before in 2013 um so that's really early on you know startup with no kind of famous clients or anything like that pretty uh you can see they're like developer phased with these photos so from a pretty basic non-design focus to something that looks a little bit more cliche or template into moving into something that's really more design focus and kind of like groundbreaking. And now in 2020, they've redesigned this website. Now, let's get started with looking what they did here in the hero section. So first of all, we have this big type. You can see that they're moving from kind of a, a normal, um, let's say, he, uh, title um, that's not very big to, to me, that kind of reminds a little bit of an Apple-y, very bold, big, bold, sans serif web uh, typography um, that stands here. And we have this kind of, we're, we're still with the diagonal, which is kind of like became their maybe their visual signature, but they've turned this into kind of an animated gradient, which the first thing that I really noticed is that it kind of overlays the text and create kind of a text over a color overlay over the text, which is really nice. And we're going to see how to do this later on. I was really confused about how they get this done. Initially, I thought, did they have kind of a transparent video? How, how did they do this? But I'll show you how they did this later on. Um, so this is really nice. They kind of upgraded uh, the um, showing the dashboard here and the payment. And also it's very important because they make sure that the logos of their clients are now fitting within the hero section before you have to scroll down. So above the fold. And that's also something that's nice to see as they grow along from a web, you know, from a company that has no maybe famous clients. Maybe if you go here, you see MoMA or something like this to a company that puts Lyft and Dribble as their main, you know, clients, even though they had a few more here, but not maybe very famous companies here. So they chose Lyft and Dribble to a company that puts Salesforce and Instacart um, and Warby Parker to a company that now has Salesforce, Amazon, Slack, Zoom, Lyft, Google. So now they, they already have major clients and they're trying to make sure that you see those clients at the top to create, of course, you know, social proof and, and credibility upfront. Now, one more thing that I love here is that even though that Stripe at this point are a huge company and they have multiple products and they're, they're a very big company that has so much stuff to talk about, they've made sure to kind of very minimize the amount of stuff that they have here in the navigation. So basically there's sign in and then four things. Now, right, those things open up into a more complex sub navigation. But I think overall, even before you hover this, this looks very, very simplified. I think there's a lot of companies that are even smaller scale 
than Stripe. And they're still struggling to put so many things and create navigation and sub navigation and overwhelm you in, in the, the things that you can look at even in the navigation. So here they simplified it to basically four things, right? You can hover them and see kind of a very clear sub navigation, but this trend of very simplified top navigation opened by, uh, let's call this mega nav, um, is pretty well done here. So after we go, we slide uh, down, you can see that they're really focusing on, now they have multiple solutions and they kind of try to show all the solutions right here. When it, when you, if you scroll down into, you know, the, the previous versions, they were mainly focusing on the APIs and development and probably they, they just didn't have that many products, but here they want to showcase the variety of all the products that they have, all the integrations. Um, so they're showing this. Again, I, I feel like this is Apple inspired in the way that they're making uh, kind of a grid of images and the grid is not perfectly aligned. I feel like I've seen this over Apple's website and I feel like we have some inspiration coming from there. This area of the API, kind of where, you're, where you see the code actually being written, uh, if I'll reload this, you can see the you know, the animation of the code being written. I feel like this is pretty similar from, you know, the, the old version that they had, but it probably um, also worked well, so they kept it. And um, what I really like, so they kept all the SVG animations of tiny icons. I really, really like that. Change the colors a little bit, but overall it stays the same. And this is really nice. So this is, initially I thought this was a video to kind of showcase uh, a very impressive visuals of we're all over the world, we're the backbone of the internet. And then I, when I double clicked it because I wanted to see if this is a video, I found out that I can actually rotate this. So this is actually some kind of a, you know, web 3D GL or something like that, that it's a, a live animation. And I think this is really nice. I mean, it's very, very delicate in terms of the colors. They're still using the brand colors, but it's not overwhelming. So the hierarchy is still take a look at, you know, the the, the text here. But it's it's very, very fun. And when you f find out that you can actually drag this, and note that when I drag this, those little circles here are kind of like moving, are jiggling down, and now they're going to come back to place. I feel like these are really, really tiny details that really adds up to the experience of the website. So that's pretty much, you know, the homepage. We're not going to go ahead and drill down into the, the rest of the pages, but they also look fantastic. I think that, you know, the team, the, the brand team, uh, branding team, I don't know if they're the, the brand team that's built the, the website for Stripe, but they're doing phenomenal, phenomenal job. Now I want to break down how they achieve this really cool effect here of the gradient overlaying the text. So as always, if you want to find out how somebody, something is done on the internet, a very fast way to do this is just, you know, right click this and inspect element and then see actually how this is structured right here. Now I've done this and let me show you how it's broken down. I've actually rebuilt this pretty quickly with Webflow and show you, so this is, you know, I didn't have a nice gradient video, video in the background. So we just put, you know, uh, an animated gradient, but I'll show you how this effect is being created pretty easily. Actually, when you find out they did this really, really creatively, and I love how they use this creatively. So basically what we have here is basically we have, you can see the, the structure of the page here on the left. So basically there's two layers of text and they're overlaid exactly one on top of the other one. So what we have is that the, this is the top one, even though it's, it looks like it's on the bottom, but this is, if we go here into the styling, you can see this is just a normal text at the bottom. There's nothing to it. It's just a text. And the layer on top of that, um, you can see here the Z index is set to 12. So it's on top of that. That actually has um, a blend mode applied to it. So with Webflow specifically, I can't apply blend modes from the interface. So We've used custom code to add the blend mode, but you can see here that the top one heading is added a blend mode of luminosity. Also, they decrease the opacity a little bit. And also the gradient overlay itself is getting a blend mode of color dodge. So basically they've put the, you know, the text over the, over the gradient 
and they're both affecting one another. So there's a text that is being applied with the color dodge of the gradient, and then on top of it, there's another text with luminosity applied to that. So I think this is really, really a creative way to create a very cool effect. Obviously, they've also created this really cool video of the gradient itself, which is much cooler than just a normal gradient. So that's probably been done with, I actually don't know what software they use to create this very cool video. Um, but it's, it's probably possible with either After Effects or I actually don't know. Anyway, I really, really love this website. Would love to hear in the comments below what do you think about Stripe's new website. Let me know and I will catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.